Hey, good morning everybody. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Please like, share, and subscribe at the end of the video. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so today we're going to hypot the Pentalabs 3CX 6000A7. It's a brand new tube. I always hypot tubes just in case, you know, something could have happened during shipping. I have no control over the shipper, so on how they handle things. FedEx usually does a really good job, but I always uh, rather be safe than sorry. So after this, I will plug it in the amp and I'll go into the testing and that'll be a separate video. So I always use a Hypotronics HyPod tester. Uh, three different ranges for voltage. 0 to 6 kV DC, 0 to 12 kV DC, 0 to 30 kV DC. It's important to use a DC high pot tester when you high pot a tube so you can reverse the polarity and uh, there's more about this in uh, the iMac literature online you can read all about it I won't get into that you want one current limited this one's limited in the microamp range so if it does flash it won't do detrimental damage to the item being tested it's really important for you know like uh, tubes like 35 or Z for example where you can end up damaging it or 570 or 572 or vacuum uh, capacitor vacuum variable capacitor okay right, so this tube should high pot above 20 kV but I'll do it to 20 kV DC you always uh, want to attach the elements together so as you can see you got the filament both sides of the filament tied together and it's tied to the grid so in this test, I'm going to test between the anode and the grid, okay? So I'm going to set the tester to the highest setting, so I should get it to 20. If I see the current meter starting to come up at all, you know, if it comes up maybe a few lines and it progressively goes forward, I back it down because that's indicating that an arc is starting to form. and. I don't want to get it to the point where it ends up flashing, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. So I have to turn the switch on one second. Okay. Here we go. This has a crowbar in it, so I'm going to shut it off. The loud bang is solenoid putting a short on the output. Okay, so. So I forgot to add that you saw it come up a little, but it's sitting on the foam, and believe it or not, you know, eventually uh, the foam will start to add some leakage. So I'll go ahead and put it on some plastic. I'll flip the, actually, I'm going to put it up on some plastic and repeat that test, and you'll see it won't have the, the same leakage as before. But it passed that test in that polarity. I'm, I'll isolate it a little bit redo the test and then flip the polarity and then I'll move on to the next test which will be between the grid and the filament which should high pot to at least 5 kV. I'm going by what uh, an engineer over at Conco since retired had uh, told me uh, for specs so and then I'll also reverse the polarity. Okay, so I'll be right back. See you soon. Okay I'm gonna go ahead and retest it. It's up on plastic. I clean the ceramic portion. This, uh, the Chinese tubes have a glazed ceramic. You always want to make sure that's nice and clean. I just wiped it down. It's a brand new tube. I didn't touch it, but someone before me probably touched it. And believe it or not, the oil from your skin will actually decrease the dielectric rating. So I just wiped it down. I didn't have any um, liquid, the proper liquid, like a sprawl alcohol, something that doesn't leave a residue. I didn't have any around to, to use that but so I'm going to turn it on and show you okay 
Okay, so that's 20 kV DC. That's about three and a half or so microamps. And continue to go. So I'm going to back it down. I'm not going to push it. So I'll go ahead and reverse the polarity and repeat the test. Be right back. Okay, polarity reversed. Hey, looks good. Okay, now I will reconfigure the shorting wire. I will short the anode to the grid and then high pop between the grid and the filament. It's easier. Okay, time to high pop between the grid and the filament. So I'm going to bring it up to 5 kV DC and reverse the polarity. Grid is grounded to the anode. Meter is now set to the lowest setting. 0 to 6 kV DC. Turn it on. See what we get. We're good. I reverse the polarity. Be right back. Okay, the polarity has been reversed. Turn it on. Zero. Five kV DC. No issues. Okay, so. I always high pot the tubes and other components. You don't want to have to rely on the main breaker. You can end up it's scary when you have a, a short in the B positive, plus you can end up damaging your diodes and other components and you know, so I always high pot stuff. And you know, the reason for the DC high pot tester is so if you have a broken wire, it'll pull the wire one way or the other, and you'll see if there's a short. You know, I've seen tubes where high pots find one direction, fails the other direction. So Learned this from Matt over at Conco years ago. A yeah, great company. He was a really nice guy. And, you know, just better to be safe than sorry. There are plans online to make your own high pod tester. Key is you want it current limited, okay? DC, direct current, and current limited. And you want to be able to be able to test it to the voltage that's required. The larger tubes, the ones with handles, you need 30 kilovolts DC between the anode and the grid. So same thing, 5 kV grid and filament. But trust me, this has saved me a lot of scary, from a lot of scary uh, bangs. And you know, I've got, I come across tubes that look perfect, brand new looking, but they had a, 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 you know, an anode to grid short. So that would have put a direct short in the B positive. So. You know, as far as the method here with grounding the elements together, that's on the iMac website. You can read it for yourself, the proper way to high pot a tube. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm going to get on plugging this in. I'm going to fine tune the filament voltage and go from there. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Lots of amps to fix. I love doing this. So like I said, the 80 through 15 meter amp is next after this. I've had a lot going on here. But I will be able to go full bore on amp stuff uh, starting now. So actually starting a few days ago, I've been doing an amp a day again. So thanks for watching. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Once again, Pentalabs 3CX6000A7YU148. Brand new tube, 73.